It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith. and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Hello, I'm Mark Hankins, and I'm with my wonderful wife, Trina. Today, we have a powerful program for you from the Word of God, and we have been talking about several programs on who you are in Christ, and the message gets bigger and bigger on who you are and what you have are your identification with Christ and seeing who you are in him. Actually, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Everything has become new. The moment you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you become a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Everything has become new. I like to say you become such a new person in Christ, <laughs> you'll have to let God introduce you to your new <laughs> self. In other words, you're such a new creature in Christ that you're not who the past made you or you're not what problems have made you. Now you're washed in the blood of Jesus. This is a massive, huge revelation of what happened in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Jesus is Lord and everything God did in Christ, he did it for you set to the credit of your account just like you did it. You were there in his death and you were there in his triumph and in his resurrection. Jesus is Lord. That's your bold confession. Boy, that's good news, isn't it? That's, that's amazing. That's the gospel. And that's the gospel. power in that gospel. <laughs> I thought Jesus went through the, the, the suffering of the cross and went through the, the death and what happened in those three days and when he was raised from the dead, when he didn't get through all that and say, well, I, I hope that makes you feel a little bit better about no. yourself. No, when he was raised from the dead, he said, this changes, changes everything. everything. All power in heaven and in earth is given to me. In other words, Jesus Christ is Lord. When you make Jesus the Lord of your life, we're not talking about a few minor changes or he might help you a little bit. No, Jesus changes everything. He does. He does. The new birth. Jesus did so much. It was a plan of God. From before the foundations of the world, he planned this whole work of redemption to buy us back. Adam sold us out. We became the, you know, slaves the to the, Bound yes, the yes. And all kinds of murder started happening, sickness, disease. That's yeah. where it all started. Uh -huh. But God, who is rich mm. in mercy, he had a plan. Yes. And he carried out that plan through Jesus and he raised us up. By grace, we've been saved through faith. Yes. Praise God. And I'm Christ so grateful. has for redeemed us yes. from the curse of the law. He purchased our freedom with his own blood. We want to look specifically on in Christ because we want to see what happened from the cross to the throne. Right. What happened when Jesus died? Why was it necessary? And what happened in his death? the blood of his cross and what happened in those three days and what happened when God raised Christ from the dead. What God saw, wonder what the devil saw, <laughs> what angels saw, right. what happened in the death and resurrection of Christ. So the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tell us what happened to Christ. In other words, a large amount of space is given to those events, right. which we would call, they would call, if you go to Israel, the Via Dolorosa, and you see those events that led up to the crucifixion, the way of suffering or the way of sorrow. Mm -hmm. And there Jesus carried the cross. He was sped upon and they cursed him and they pulled out and then they, the spear, all the things that happened on the Via Dolorosa. What happened? You see what happened to Christ in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You see what happened when Jesus was raised from the dead. But in Paul's letters, you don't just see what happened to Christ. 
you see what happened in, in Christ. Christ. <laughs> so Paul's revelation tells us what happened in Christ, or he tells us what happened in the spirit or in the unseen. unseen. Or Paul's revelation given by the Holy Spirit, given by the Lord Jesus himself, that revelation, I like to say the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are a photograph mm. of redemption, mm -hmm. a picture of Jesus dying on the cross and being raised from the dead. So the four gospels are a photograph, but Paul's letters are an x-ray, an x-ray. Think about the difference between a photograph and an x-ray. A photograph, you see the external. An x-ray, you see the internal. It's the same person. Same, same person. So if I saw a photograph, right. then I could see you. But if I saw an x-ray, I would see inside yeah. you. You yeah. see somebody's structure in their bones. So in Paul's letters, or what we call Paul's revelation, uh, Paul's letters, I think um, one writer said it this way, James Stalker. Paul's letters contain the thoughts yes. that Jesus carried away from this world unuttered. They are the advanced teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus said, I've got a lot of things I want to tell you, right. a lot of things I want to show you, but I cannot tell you now. Mm -hmm. He said, but when the Holy Spirit comes, mm -hmm. he's going to guide you into all truth. So Jesus had a bunch of things he wanted to tell the disciples. He said, you couldn't handle them now. He said, but after the resurrection, when the Holy Spirit wow. comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will take what is mine yes. and show it to you. So the Holy Spirit's in that show business. The Holy <laughs> Spirit's the head of God's revelation department. Amen. Amen. He will show you the things of Christ, or he will impart them to you, or the Holy Spirit takes everything Christ has done for us, and he makes it a reality in our experience. Right. In other words, he makes it real to us. Right. He takes what Jesus has done for us and makes it a reality right. in our lives. So people live in their natural life and they think this is reality. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah. There is a reality yeah. that is in Christ. No, they'll say the struggle is real. Well, no. the struggle is real, but Jesus is more real. What happened in the death and resurrection of Christ, the reality of our redemption. So it is our confession of faith that produces the reality of it in our lives. And it is the person of the Holy Spirit that takes it out of theology and brings it into reality. The moment you're filled with and yielded to the Holy Spirit, he takes everything Jesus has done for us and translates it into personal victory. Wow. That means without the help of the Holy Spirit, you can have a lot of information right. and you can have no personal victory. Right. In other words, the Holy Spirit brings the light of redemption and right. shows us who we are and makes it a reality in our lives. So if somebody's hungry to know, the Holy Spirit will just move right in there and help you. You know, there's so many people that are involved with just religion. They go to church and say all these prayers or, or mm -hmm. incantations, whatever they, you know, and they don't know what they're talking about. It's yeah. not life, it's dead. But when you meet Jesus, He is life. And when you're mm -hmm. hungry, the Holy Spirit will fill that vo void mm -hmm. with truth. And, and people are hungry, but many times we don't live in the light of revelation knowledge. Right. Uh, some people say, well, if you have faith, you just have faith and you have faith and we live by faith. But the secret to faith right. is revelation knowledge. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So some people say, well, you really can't grow in faith, but if you can grow in revelation knowledge, then you can grow in faith. What is revelation knowledge? Revelation knowledge is the word of God. But when you get further light where Paul said, revelation and understanding the eyes of your heart, you know, when you get further light from the word of God, then faith comes or your faith grows exceedingly, Paul told the Thessalonians. And it's faith in Jesus. It makes me think about Peter. You know, when P Jesus said to Peter, who do men say that I am? Yeah. And he said, well, some uh, say you're Elijah, whatever. I love it. He said, but who do you say? When Jesus said that to him, the spirit of God moved inside of Peter. And he said, yeah. you are the son of the living God. Yeah. 
<laughs> and he said flesh and blood did not reveal God. Oh, yeah. Father yeah, yeah. revealed. That's revelation knowledge. Yeah. The it's a revealing reveal of Jesus. It's a personal thing. Yes. And when Peter saw that, it, it, he was Simon, right? right? And he changed his name to Peter. His whole identity. So revelation will change your identity. So here's the way I saw this probably 40 years ago. I was reading that conversation between Jesus and Simon. And he said, who do you say I am? And Simon, he said, some people say you're Elijah and all that. And Simon said, you are the Christ, the son of the living yeah. God. And then Jesus turned and said, and you are Peter. And upon this rock, I'll build my church. Wow. In other words, when Simon declared and saw who Jesus mm -hmm. was and is, yeah. when Simon saw who Jesus is, and he declared it, then Jesus told him who he is. <laughs> In other words, the moment yeah, you know. see who Jesus is and declare who he is, wow, he'll tell you now who yeah. you are, that you're not just the product of all yeah. kinds of stuff around you, yeah. that God had you in mind yeah. before you were ever born and he created you and the devil's done everything he can to try to destroy you yeah. for the last 20 years and Jesus kept you alive and the devil's messed up your identity and told you that's just the way you are. But the moment you see who Jesus is, he'll say, let me tell you who you yeah. are. You're not who your mistakes made you. You're redeemed by the blood. You're loved by God. God has a plan for your life. And there must be a change of identity for you to reach your destiny. Wow. In other words, you can't reach your divine destiny still seeing yourself naturally. When you see yourself in Christ, now you can reach a divine destiny that God has planned for you. And the devil's tried to stop it and tried to kill you, but he, God kept you alive. <laughs> that reminds me of that joke you tell about the guy that went to the psychiatrist and thought he was a dog. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, the guy having emotional problems. And it's not funny at all because people do have struggles. But he said, he went to a psychologist. The psychologist said, what's your problem? He said, well, he said, well, I think I'm a dog. And I struggled with depression. I think I'm a dog. Psychiatrist said, well, how long have you had that problem? He said, well, since I was a puppy. He said, he said, well, get on the couch and let's talk about it. He said, I'm not allowed. So he had a real inferiority complex. So, so a lot of times people... They think they're a dog. They, and they've been having the problems since they were a puppy. So a lot of times you may have been born. People will say, well, I was just born this way. Well, you may have been born that way the first time, but That's when you right. get born again, born again. Well, you're not born that way the second time because you're born again with the same wow. life that Jesus Christ has and the same righteousness and same victory. When you get born again, you become a new creature in Christ That's and right. the blood of Jesus erases your past. Old things are passed away. Come on. Nobody else can get rid of the old things. Everything has become new. Jesus Christ is the one that does that for you. You see who you are and what you have in Christ. Amen. Greater is he who is in you yes. than he that is in the world. Yes. You know who you are. He's the greater one. He's on the inside. Yes. I love this quote because uh, this comes from P.C. Nelson, who wrote Bible Doctrines for the Assemblies of God, First Pentecost, a theologian, and P.C. Nelson, fluent in 32 different languages. Wow. And Dad Hagen actually called P.C. Nelson Dad Nelson. So he, yeah. can, so he is a, a healing evangelist and just a brilliant man. And he said it this way. He said, no great preacher has arisen to bless the people of God who has not lighted his torch at the flame kindled by Paul. Wow, think about that. No great preacher, but we're going to take the word preacher out and we're just going to put a man or a woman of God or a believer. No great preacher preacher, no great believer has arisen to bless the people of God who has not lighted his torch at the flame kindled by Paul. He said, because in Paul's letters, whole sermons may be found in separate words, whole volumes in single sentences. Even after 2,000 years, Paul is preaching every week in a thousand languages, in a hundred thousand pulpits all over the world. Paul's letters are the advanced teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, Paul's letters are literally Jesus talking to us post-resurrection. After something happened in the death and resurrection, Jesus said, now 
Let me teach you what happened mm -hmm. in Christ. And let me tell you who you are in him because you're not the same as you used to be, that you are a new creature. God puts a new heart in you, a new spirit in you, a new nature on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit living in you, the same spirit that raised Christ mm -hmm. from the dead, right. same identical spirit gives you a new identity. And what shall we say to all these things? Yeah. God be for us. Who can be against us? Oh, it's He amazing. that spared not his own son, but delivered him up yes. for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give yes. us all things? That's part of Paul's revelation. Amazing. That's Romans God's chapter for 8. You. Yes. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the free. law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. In other words, the law of sin and death that came in through Adam's disobedience, that law of sin and death. He said, but there's another law. The law of the spirit of life in Christ, and one translation says, it lifts me out of the law of sin and death. In other words, you're not saying that the problem's not there. You're just saying there's another law in Christ, the law of the spirit of life in Christ, that lifts me out of the natural and lifts me in to the reality of all that Jesus has done for me. Wow, and the whole chapter, Romans 8, tells us how the law of the spirit of life works. Wow. It's like the law of lift that overcomes the, the law of gravity. The law of gravity. Yeah. It's stronger. It's positioned just right yeah. to lift you out. Lifts you out. Thank God. Yes. God wanted to lift you out, lift you up. Yes. There's a plan. You have a destiny. Yeah. You're on the way. Yes. And so Paul's revelation declaring who we are in Christ is 130 scriptures. Wow. One of my favorites. I've got to give you this one. Colossians chapter 2. And verse three says, for in him are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That means in Christ, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In other words, Christ himself unlocks wisdom, revelation, holy information, mm -hmm. powerful information. I like to say this information will change a nation. <laughs> or I like to say this revelation this holy information is such is so dangerous that the, that says that Paul said the devil, a messenger of Satan, attacked me constantly because of this revelation. Yeah. In other words, when you're carrying this information, the devil is afraid of you. That's when right. you're carrying this information, you can change not only your life mm -hmm. but friends, family. You can change and affect a whole generation with what we call Paul's revelation. He called it the word of faith. It is near you. It is in your mouth, in your heart, that Jesus is Lord. When you declare that word of faith, he said, your heart believes unto righteousness, your mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, that, that, that the reality of your salvation is activated by that confession that Jesus is my Lord and I am saved, the power of that confession. So if somebody's really struggling with something, seems like it just repeated again and again, and you think you got it whipped and then, oh, here I'm down again, same thing. What do you do? Well, the law of the spirit of life works the same. So that means if something knocked you down yesterday, Activate the law of the spirit of life. It'll lift yeah, you out of it up. again today. Mm -hmm. In other words, no matter how many times you go down, that means you ain't staying down. You're getting back up. And so the law of faith and the law of the spirit of life operates the same. One of my favorite quotes from Smith Wigglesworth, the apostle of faith, he said, any man can be changed by faith, no matter how he may be fettered. The word fettered is the word bound. Any person can be changed by faith no matter how they may be bound. That means the devil cannot make a bondage that your faith cannot break off of you. The moment you dare to believe the word of God, the moment you dare to have faith in the blood of Jesus, I believe and then release your faith speaking words, a confession of faith that brings you into agreement with what Jesus has done for you. Chains will break off of you. Fear will have to leave you. No matter where the enemy got in, he's got to
to get yeah. out. In other words, <laughs> this is the victory that overcomes the world, living and walking by faith. So we don't just want to have faith on Sunday. We want to live by faith. Somebody said that it becomes the chief occupation of your life is living by faith. So you feed your faith on the word of God. Actually, Philemon verse six says that the communication of your faith may become effectual by acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ. In other words, feeding on the word of who you are in Christ and on the blood and Colossians 2, 9 and 10. For in Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. <laughs> so if you're not impressed with who you are in Christ, you just hadn't seen him lately. He is Lord of all. He is the last Adam. He is the archetype of the new creation. He is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the universe. Jesus is Lord. He has an international personality. Anywhere he shows up, everybody knows that's him. And the <laughs> devil has to run because of faith in the blood of Jesus. I like how you uh, have a message, the end you gospel. Yeah. You know, he is the head of all yes. principality and power. And you, and you, by your union with yes. him, are complete. Everything union. God did in Christ. You are connected. He and did it you. for us as mm -hmm. our substitute. And now we are in him. You he did it say, for you us. Don't say, yay, Jesus. Yay. Yeah. I mean, you do praise him yes. for all that he's done, but he didn't do it for himself. Uh, he yeah. did it for you. Yes. On Easter, we said, well, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. And that is essential. But he is not the only one that's alive. We were made alive yeah. together with him. And when he's alive, the significance of his resurrection is determined by the nature of his death. In other words, on the cross, his yeah. death, he died in our place. Right. So if his death was our death, then his resurrection is our resurrection. We have been made alive together with Christ. So the power of Easter is not just Jesus is alive, is we are he alive. Is alive. Too. He's the Lord, and we've been made alive together with yeah. Him. I tell you, you get a hold of the scriptures on who you are in Christ, and until next time, God richly bless you, and you dare to declare, This is who I am in Christ. Are you struggling to find your identity and God's purpose for your life? The power of identification package is just for you. Your understanding of who I am is radically changed by what happened in the death and resurrection of Christ. My definition of I is it's no longer I that lives, but it is now Christ that lives in me. With the spirit of wisdom and revelation, God will show you who you are in Christ. When you order the Power of Identification package, you get the books, The Power of Identification with Christ and Revolutionary Revelation plus the four CD set, Your Identity and Destiny in Christ, and the four CD set, Revelation Knowledge Breaking Barriers. Your gift of $25 or more will help Pastor Mark and Trina Hankins train leaders around the world. Order today. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Well, I trust you're blessed by the word today. Wow declaring and seeing the reality of who you are in Christ is what changed my life at 17 years old. And my wife, Trina, we first started uh, dating and getting to know each other, studying who you are in Christ. So we would just go through the scriptures. And so we have put together resources, some books and some CDs that make it easy for you to see your identification with Christ. And the way the Lord said it to me is you have to have a change of identity to reach your divine destiny. In other words, God will give you revelation of your identity, who you are in Christ, which will unlock your destiny. So I encourage you to get the resources on the screen. You can call our office. You can get on the website, markhankins.org. So I encourage you to get the books, get the CDs, and just feed on it, and then pass it out to somebody else. Say, listen to this. This will change your life. So we're so blessed that you joined with us as we studied who you are in Christ, and we're not finished yet. It's going to get better, and it's going to get greater, and you're going to see it for yourself, and we're right. still seeing it ourselves, and our lives are being changed, but we believe God, the gospel of Christ, is changing a whole nation. May God richly bless you. We want to thank all the Mark 
and Trina Hankins Ministries partners. Amen. You have made this ministry possible. Praise the Lord. And the word is working mightily here. For over 40 years, our desire has been to take the foundational truths we have learned from our parents to believers. We have felt an acceleration of that assignment, and now more than ever, we want to take the message of faith that transformed our lives to as many people, churches, cities, and nations as possible. Many of the nations we go to have very little access to the teaching of the Word of God. So we not only go there, but we translate and distribute our books so that pastors and leaders can continue to feed their faith. When they are strong in faith, they are powerful. We like to picture the distribution of the Word like passing out ammunition to people. Once people have the right ammo, they are able to take their authority in Christ, live victorious, and make an impact in their world. The books are so instrumental in teaching because even if it's just one book, they can read that book and then they pass it on. That message is such a tool that can go where we can't go. The Lord continues to open the doors in new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in 100 different languages. We've been to over 30 different countries, but many of them again and again, inspired by the word of faith still working. We believe if we'll do our part in broadcasting on television through the website, social media, the app, and publishing books and CDs, that God will do his part and make sure that the message lands in the right place at the right time. individual is so valuable to Jesus that he died for each and every one. And if just one person can get a hold of the word of faith in any village, any city, any country, and in any nation, that one person can change their world. The exciting thing is when we distribute the word that God gave us, there are people God joins to us to help, and we all become partners in doing this assignment. We could not do what we're doing without our partners. And we thank God for every man, woman, and even teenager that God has joined to us to help fulfill our call. When everybody pulls together, we are able to preach the word, not only in places like Africa and India, but also through avenues such as books, CDs, TV, social media, the app, and the website. We are so thankful for our partners and somebody on the other side of the world is telling them, thank you. Together we can, together we will. Thank you, partners. Uh, this is Mark and Trina Hankins, and we thank you so much for watching this program. And you can get on markhankins.org on our website, and all the information you need is on the screen there. So you can connect together with us, and we want to know who you are, and thank you for being a blessing around the world. In Jesus' name, God bless you.